In today's video, we are going to be taking you through a basic set in preparation for a top water batsman for 50 over cricket. The first phase that we are going to be looking at, the thrower is going to throw and the batter is going to look to defend or play as straight as possible. If the ball is in a wider channel outside the stump, the player is going to look to leave. Important here is when you are leaving, you are making sure that your footwork is still good and that you cover the line of the stump to really give yourself a chance in case the ball does move. This also ensures that our movement is always positive and that our head is always moving towards the line of the oh. ball or where we might make contact later on. For the next phase, we are going to be using smaller balls, 1-1-3 gram balls, as this enables the thrower to throw at a good pace and still get lots of late movement with the ball. This is to better represent what a bowler would be doing in favourable conditions for him. If as a batsman you can get used to playing come, the ball come. here, once you move into a game situation, it's going to be that much easier because you have got the muscle memory from there. Have a jump! Have a jump, boy! Six of two gullies. To play a moving ball, there are a couple of ways you can do it. You can either look to come out of your crease to try and limit the amount of movement the bowler can get, or you can go deep in your crease to play the ball after it has moved so you can watch the movement onto the bat. It's important to note that the thrower needs to try and challenge the batsman as much as possible in this, because as soon as it becomes too easy, the purpose of this draw becomes lost. Well played, Mackenzie! <laughs> <laughs> that is a jaffa. That's the Neil Mackenzie leave right there. So today, I tried to challenge Zenon as much as possible. There are some good balls thrown, but ultimately I did not get him out, which is a bit sad for me because you need your pride. I, I wish that one hit the stumps, the one that beat you. Oh! I've almost been out, but not yet. I don't know how that stops it. The one that jagged in? Yeah. Just clear. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know, I think we need to have a review. Because these balls will go through it, I'll stop them. No, it definitely went out. Because it almost hit me in the head. But it was a good session because intensity was up and there was a lot of banter going backwards and forwards. And that's what you need if you want to grow as a cricketer. If you can hear me over that, consider becoming a member. This gives you nice perks and it helps you support us at the same time. The next phase we are going to be looking at is our strike rotation option, but more so in our soft skill strike rotation option. So we are going to be looking to drop the ball nice and close to us between cover and point, try and play the ball off the right hip. We're going to try and look to drop the ball there's a cone just in front of square, anywhere behind that, because there generally isn't a square leg early on, for a single option there, trying to get your front hip in line with that. And the last one we're going to look at for today is playing the ball towards mid-on. Mid-on is normally a fielder that's a bit on their heels, and the bowler can't cover the line as you could to mid-off. So you have a little bit more reaction time for yourself to run to before the fielder can get to the ball. All of these are important because you're playing with the full face of the bat initially and only adjusting once the ball makes contact. Limiting the amount of dot balls you face is also going to help you increase your strike rate, which at the end of the day is going to allow us to score more runs because there is a limit on the amount of balls that can be bowled to us. Moving on to phase four, we are now going to be looking to take on our shots and hit it nice and hard. For this tool, we have not put where the fielders are because each bowler is going to maneuver the fielders differently in a game situation. All we are trying to do is make sure that we get into good positions and extend through the ball, trying to hit it so that if there weren't fielders, it would go to the boundary. Ultimately, your goal is as soon as you beat the fielder by a meter or a meter and a half, you get your boundary. This is also going to help us maximize the power play because as soon as you can score runs with the field in, once the field goes out, you can just accumulate and take it from there with the odd boundary. If you can win the power play and make the power play be more favorable to you, this can set up the rest of the game and allow you to control the game from there all the way to the end. Insert standard YouTube outro. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing. See you in the next video. That is great. <laughs>